In case you haven't noticed, playing Magic the Gathering can get kind of expensive. And if you're anything like me, you might have a few too many commander decks. But that's because part of what's fun about this game is constantly trying new things and building a bunch of new strategies and seeing what you like, what you don't like, and maybe you like a lot of things. So how do we do this? How do we get to a point where we can build a lot of good decks without having to spend tons and tons of money? That's what I'm gonna show you today. The most helpful tip I can give you to save money to let you do things like this, build a bunch of commander decks with a bunch of different strategies, is right here. This right here is the key to everything. And what I mean by that is we're simply going to save money by not having to buy multiple copies of staple cards. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you a better example on what I mean by that. Buying only a single copy of an expensive staple is a great way to cut down the price on building decks. But what exactly do I mean by this? Because yeah, you see a bunch of cards in here, but what what can we how can we do this? So I wanna just grab a card as an example. Let's grab this Crater Hoof Behemoth that I have here. Uh, I have this Crater Hoof Behemoth in two of my decks. I have it in my Moldrotha deck, and I have it in my Druid deck. So I wanna crack both of these decks open and show you what I'm doing to make way for this single copy of Crater Hoof Behemoth. You didn't see that. As you can see, I just have a simple blank card to mark Crater Hoof Behemoth, and then there's this. So, a couple, couple things. One, these are really just simple, standard size playing cards. Uh, you can buy blank copies on Amazon. You can get like a pack of like 100 of them for like 10 bucks or something crazy like that. And that's a great way to do it. And if you want, you can even write out what the card does. So this opens up a couple of options for you of how you would play this. So you can leave it in here uh, just permanently. Uh, and then you can either uh, wait till you're going to play that deck. You can go through it, take all of these cards and then swap them out. Or you can wait till they're drawn and you go to play it and then you can pull it out of your binder. Or if you go through the process of actually writing out the description, uh, if you at least have your binder with you so you can prove that you have the actual card, People probably don't care that you play it. If you are gonna be playing one of those methods that I just mentioned, where you are taking the card in and out of the binder to actually play with the actual card and not the placeholder that you have, make sure that you have an inner sleeve around the card just to prevent damage from you taking it in and out of the binder. Now, I am far from the first person to come up with this concept. This is something that I got from hearing other people talk about it, but as a result, that means that there's some variance in how you do this. So like, as you can see here, I have a middle row that I leave for marking what decks I have each of these cards in. And that just kind of helps me remember on what I'm doing. And a couple of times in doing this system, I have ended up with extra copies of cards over time. And then I can know, oh, well, I only have this card in two decks. So I have an extra copy of it now. I get to get out of the binder and just put it in the actual deck. So let me know down in the comments, is this something that you think is worthwhile or do you think it's better to just spend the money and have multiple copies of Smothering Tithe? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but let me know. And if this is something you're interested in trying, uh, let me know how it goes for you. And also whether there's maybe a different way that you would do it, or maybe you're taking some idea from here and some ideas from someone else. Let me know, I'm curious. I'm always looking to uh, better function as a magic player. So I would also like to learn if you have a better way of doing it. Yes, this does sometimes cause some a little, you to kind of spend a little extra time during games, unless you do the method I mentioned where you go ahead of time and you take all the the, fake, the the placeholder cards out and put in the real ones. Like that is something that can happen. However, I have found that this has saved, saved me tons of money and has allowed me to build a lot more decks a lot more quickly. And also it keeps you from being in a position where you buy cards because you think they're gonna be good for the deck. But then after you play, you're like, 
maybe this card isn't so good in the deck. And if that's one of the expensive cards, that's a real feel bad. So I have found this method to be absolutely a life-changing lifesaver. And uh, especially with our Commander series coming out very soon, make sure you subscribe so you see that when it comes. Uh, this method is really gonna help me keep up with all the new decks that we have to build because uh, we're having a different theme every game. So this is really gonna help me keep up with that. But let me know in the comments what you think about the method. If it's something you've tried before, if it's something you're going to try, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed. We will be having more budget-friendly suggestions here soon. And like I mentioned, a Commander gameplay series coming very soon. See you guys later.